the talk today is uh, for those of you who are interested in how to actually measure the effectiveness of your cybersecurity program with respect to ICS. Um, this is actually a topic that came out of a lot of work I've done over the years. Um, it's a little bit about me. I'm not going to go through line by line because a lot of the things I'm going to talk about kind of outline my journey. Uh, whether I knew it or not, I was actually trying to find cybersecurity metrics from the very beginning of my career. Um, I've been obsessed with the idea of how do I actually understand this thing so I can not only do something about it, but if I need to get more resources, if I need to get budget, if I need to be able to get a new tool, I need to be able to measure it and explain that measurement. Um, and so across the years, I figured out a few ways of doing that, and that's what I'm going to be able to share with you today. A lot of this started um, with a conversation that I even had here at SANS two years ago. Uh, this was me when I had a baby beard, and actually, um, Justin from General Mills, uh, he's got the longest beard that I've seen so far. The last time we were both on stage was at 2017, so if you see the guy with the biggest beard, tell him to submit a talk for next year, and I want to see his picture of one beard next to another beard. I just want to just kind of just start measuring that as well. Um, so I started off with this conversation about metrics with what is, would be the one metric to start off with. If there was only one thing that you could measure, what would have the greatest impact on your program? And the conversation that took place in 2017 was this idea of what does the CFO care about? Well, they care about dollars and cents. So could we talk about cybersecurity programs in dollars and cents and measuring our impact to that? If you want more questions on like how to start off a program, I'm going to talk a lot about the programmatic things, about what you want to do for resources, about how to design a program, how to communicate out, but you still don't know what the one thing to start with is. Go back to this 2017 talk. It's on YouTube. I also wrote a thing for the SANS reading room, so you could actually get some context behind that. There's a lot more material. So if at the end of this you're like, that's great, but where do I start? I, I answered that question in 2017, and we'll continue that trend through what I'm talking about uh, today which is really this conversation about that boardroom piece, right? That's where a lot of the movement happens for our programs. While a lot of the ground truth is in the technical weeds in the field, what happens to our program gets decided here, right? But meanwhile, if we're talking about the measurement for that, a lot of it right now is red, yellow, and green. But the actual data, the actual conversation we're having in the field is messier. It's so messy that when we talk about what cybersecurity risk looks like in the field, we feel overwhelmed, right? Gasping for breath while this board conversation is happening somewhere else. So why is measuring this so problematic, so difficult? Well, I've found over the years that there have been a few myths that people have used to say, well, I'm not going to measure this thing. Um, I need programmatic improvement. I need resources. I need budget. I'm constrained. But measuring it feels like it's admiring the problem, right? It feels like I'm putting a resource to look at this thing as opposed to, can I take that resource and have them actually help me out with my IDS? Can I have them help me out with firewall uh, rules and implementation as opposed to measuring the problem? So I've got a few myths here that I'm going to quickly dispel before we're able to move on to the actual solution set. The first one is that getting the data is hard, right? Um, if you are saying this about your cybersecurity program, about your cybersecurity metrics in particular, then what I'm going to say to you is that you're doing this the wrong way. There actually is a conversation to have where you want to say, where do I start? And again, it could be that first metric that I said in 2017. It could be something different. But at the end of the day, we're talking about something very fundamentally different when you say, oh, it's hard to do this thing. It could be easy, but where's that starting point? If you look at a dirty kitchen, the entire task could be overwhelming to clean the kitchen. Focus on one spot first, clean that one spot, and then move. Next thing you know, you have a whole clean kitchen. At least that's what I'm told in my household. So what can you measure? Where can you start when you have this measurement conversation? What's the number one thing to start with? And understand that metrics will improve with time. The very first metric, if you very first start out in securing and then measuring the security of that thing is your first journey in this, know that five years from now, the metrics that you present are going to be different than the metrics of today. That's just going to be the byproduct of measuring something for the first time. How tall are you? I'm very hungry. OK, well, that doesn't answer the question. I'm going to get better at that over time, right? Uh, maybe I'll start measuring things in the amount of hand spans I have before I can come up with a uniform way of describing height. At this point, I'm really just asking you to do something. If you're saying that it's too hard to get data, just start with something you know that you can actually get data for and measure it. Because that's how you're going to get to this programmatic improvement piece. The second myth I hear is security is an art form. And, and luckily, I've not heard it as much uh, over the past few years with ICS in particular, because we understand that there's data to be driven out of here. 
But I include this slide to be able to demonstrate for folks who want to say, well, I, what I do is I, I look at the feeds and I understand the threats, and by my understanding of the threats, by looking at feeds, I therefore know how to secure my systems. This is a really bad argument because there are metrics in art as well, right? Uh, the golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence. You can see the golden ratio applied in art. Even Sonic the Hedgehog has a metric, right? We're still measuring something. It may not be the thing that you intend to measure, but there's still something there that you can measure. So if this is where you're going with, this is where you're starting off with, know that there's a measurement in almost everything, including the art form that is cybersecurity. When we say that cybersecurity is both a science and an art, and you're convinced that it's more of an art, even in art, we can measure something. So can you document that thing? Can you count something? Can you make an observational trend even, at the very worst case, I guarantee that you and your engineers in ICS can't. So here, I beg you to literally just do anything, and you'll be started down this, this journey of doing metrics. And then lastly, uh, that this takes too much time. Um, for those of you who are engineers, one of the things that we learned very early on is that you must uh, optimize within your constraints, right? We don't have a gold-plated system anywhere. Security is no different. If Iron Man can build his Iron Man suit in a desert, then you can be able to do it with any type of budget that you have, right? So uh, size your efforts to the team that you have. Even if your team is just one, I'll talk about that in a minute, even if you just have a team of one, you can start measuring something. There are resources there that will be available for you. Uh, don't boil the ocean. Don't get overwhelmed and start saying, you know what, I've read this document and it says there's 120 metrics that I should do. I should do all those metrics. That's going to overwhelm you quickly. Start off with what you know you can do. Anything that is worth it will take time and effort. And uh, this Vincent Lombardi quote here, if you're not keeping score, you're just practicing. Another good quote here is that until you can measure something, can you truly understand the thing that you are doing? So how did I start here? Um, I, I alluded that I'll talk a little bit about my journey because what my journey did, unfortunately or fortunately, was start letting me go down this road of metrics without me truly realizing it. And it all started with a stupid question. It's actually not so much the stupid question. It was so stupid I put the in the title twice. It's the the stupid question. And I asked when I was uh, doing wastewater, which is where I started. Many people, I guess, don't know that because uh, they know me from my energy days and you know me from uh, beyond when I was actually in uh, some really, really dirty situations. Um, I started off in wastewater. And in wastewater, I was doing maintenance on RTUs, PLCs. We're doing a whole SCADA switchover. And during that switchover, I was actually asked somebody, he's like, well, who takes care of cybersecurity? It was the stupidest question I've asked that propelled the rest of the 15 years of my career. Um, it turned out, because the question got answered with, oh, don't worry, the internet service provider has that covered. And I was like, I don't know enough to say you're wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's not the right answer, right? Um, and so maybe this was my first metric, and it was a binary. Is somebody taking care of cybersecurity? And then I moved on from there. So in understanding that I did not know enough, I actually went back to school. Um, I went and got my graduate degree in engineering, and when I was in engineering, I discovered that there were metrics galore for just about everything, right? Uh, this is actually from my graduate advisor. Uh, one of my very first assignments was taking a program he wrote in Fortran and making it into something more modern than Fortran. Uh, but it was talking about covariance of where you put a wind turbine, because we know and we can measure that when you put a wind turbine in one place, it'll change the wind patterns for the rest of the wind farm. The fact that we were able to measure covariance on that amazed me. And everyone, I assume, in the room, if you're familiar with energy or electric, you know about load curves. I could see that we were actually measuring the balance and generation of the grid to be able to start saying, well, how do I optimize this program? How do I optimize my fuel generation that I'm able to provide? And this is actually uh, the power plant that I worked at. Um, it was, was much newer when I worked there. Uh, that, that's, that's in the 1800s. So again, though, the idea here was that they've been doing this for a long time, right? On the engineering side, and this is what convinces me that we are the ones who are going to be able to solve this, on the engineering side, we've been doing this for a very long time. I believe that ICS security is going to solve the security metrics program before IT solves that problem within other constructs, within financial or any other sector, because this is what we do, right? We've been measuring this for now almost 100 plus years. How could we not be the ones to be able to crack this nut? So as Tim alluded to, I then went to FERC. Um, I had some consulting gigs in between. I was applying more things on where do we put wind turbines, because that was my graduate degree what I was in. I was measuring a whole lot of bunch of things, and I went to FERC, and we were talking about, well, how do we do this in cybersecurity? 
And I got really excited because we started off with this conversation on SIP. And SIP had measurement, right? Or at least that's what I was told. And for those of you who are familiar with SIP, I don't see any groans yet because I have SIP 7 up here. For those of you who are familiar with SIP, right, we started this, one of these conversations with ports and services. And within here, I got super excited because I saw the word measures. I was like, okay, some, we're doing it. We are, we are measuring a thing. We're measuring something in cybersecurity. And then I got into some weird language. We're technically feasible. Okay, I don't know how we're going to measure that one, but go on. I'm sure that I'm going to get to the punchline at some point. And for those of you who don't know, we're talking about, in this case here, for this requirement, this is actually something that we talked about in ICS 456. There's a conversation that takes place here about for your logically network accessible ports that are determined to be needed, but if your device has no provision for disabling or restricting the logic ports, then they're just deemed needed. We're technically feasible. How do I measure this? Like, like now I'm, I'm, okay, I really want to get to measurement. I'm told there's a measure here. What's my measurement? I am measuring the documentation and the listings, and I slowly had the gut-wrenching realization that not all measurements were equal, that in this case here, I was measuring compliance, and I was not measuring security. Now, again, in 456, we go on to talk about the importance of the culture of compliance and how it can help you out. And, and that's a different conversation. But for me, I was looking for that measurement thing, and I was not getting it from there. So I then went on down the street to the US Department of Energy. I was convinced this time I was going to be able to crack this measurement problem. And there, we started having this conversation around C2M2. Are anybody familiar with C2M2, Cybersecurity Capability Maturity Model? Uh, or you may be uh, familiar with another uh, byproduct of it that was used as, as sort of an inspiration, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. But regardless, we're talking about this idea of crawl, walk, run. And crawl, walk, run for any concept is the idea of getting more mature, right? Of getting more sophisticated. So over here, we can see we have Legos. And the Lego uh, store is in uh, Disney Springs, so go on and check it out. You can see that we start off with something very simple, right? These Duplo blocks, they're big enough to make sure that small children won't choke on them. All the way to Lego Mindstorm competition, which is the idea of having collegiate academics program microcontrollers on Lego robots, zip around tracks, lift things up, do some cool things. The idea here is that we're getting more complete, more sophisticated with time. And it looks like there may be something there to measure. What this looks like in practice is and then this may be a little bit of an eye chart for folks, but starting off with, do you have an inventory? And doing this inventory may be ad hoc. And then getting something a little bit more advanced, right? So now I'm talking about characteristics in that inventory. And now I'm asking whether or not I have documented practices, whether or not I have stakeholders that are involved. Do I have uh, adequate resources, people, funding, tools, training, et cetera? And then finally, this running stage. Is it current? Uh, do, am I looking at it for all IT and OT connected devices? And do I have policies and procedures that I'm getting some sort of sign off by senior management for this? What I found out though is that really we're talking about a conversation of can you run and can you keep running, right? There's a new measurement here, but I still wasn't getting to the measurement of, well, how fast do I run? Can I run an eight minute mile? I don't know at this point, right? I don't even know if I can run with a limp or not. It just says, can I run? Right? So it, it is a measurement. There's a measurement there, but it still wasn't getting me that measurement that I was looking for from the very beginning. And I slowly started to realize that the problem set that we're describing is this architecture of truth, and there's measurements for each part of those. So what we just described was this security and risk management program. The idea here being that we have C2M2, we have CSF, we have some sort of metrics that we're measuring here. But then there's this board level truth, right? This thing that's happening at the enterprise and mission and insight where the board is getting information aggregated up in some way and then it's providing governance back down. But the interpretation here could be night and day. Again, trying to figure out how do I remove that subjectivity because I want to measure a thing and subjectivity and measurement don't necessarily go hand in hand. To make matters worse, there's another level of truth beyond that, right? Which is what are actually on my systems, my networks, my assets, apps and systems the security controls that I have in place. And there's more information gathering and aggregation and interpretation and governance that comes from that. Leading us to three different truths that we're trying to actually measure. The idea here of a board truth, what the executives are looking for, what management's looking for, what's actually been happening at the management side, right? How well is my program doing? Do I have adequate resources for these problems? To what's actually happening on the ground. 
And so we started going on this journey, and I'm going to show you sort of the, the punchline in a bit of how to bring all these things together based off of the idea that know that folks have started doing this. So if you start getting overwhelmed in the next few slides, folks have started doing this. You can do this too. There's not going to be any magic behind what I'm going to say. It's just going to require some work. So metrics itself, leverage the concepts from other disciplines that are already available. Uh, there are already metrics happening everywhere else in your organization, maybe not everywhere else. In a lot of other places in your organization, people are measuring things. One of the uh, oddities that I found with using utilities in my examples of creating cybersecurity metrics was there was a utility that was actually creating cybersecurity metrics for uh, sustainability, sorry, sustainability metrics. So what were you doing for different types of fuel mixtures? How were customers reacting to the fact that you were able to do more green power? Those are metrics that were being imported up to the board, and they already had the infrastructure in place to do that. So when it came time for the cybersecurity program to have a metrics program, I just said, well, just tap onto that thing, right? They already have the infrastructure in place. They're already reporting up to the executives. Can you just use that and go from there? So what else is being measured within your organization, within your ICS environments? What tools are there that are being used? You already have a, a gigantic Hadoop lake. Are you going to Hadoop the Hadoop? Somebody may be Hadooping already. In this case, you can use that data scientist, right? And applicability with leadership. Um, so in this case here, do you have the capability to talk to your management in terms that they understand? That's why in 2017, I started off with that dollar metric, right? The impact metric, because they understand that that's part of the risk they're already trying to mitigate. Other things that you tie into that program have to respond to risk. That's the language that they speak. And I can tell you for sure that we can't necessarily go up there, though I'm going to contradict myself in a second, with red, yellows, and greens, right? Because the CFO is going up there with Dow Jones Industrial Charts and Graphs, talking about what they're doing for financial risk, what's going to happen next quarter, and then we're showing up with crayons to a math test saying it's going to be yellow. So start somewhere. Uh, you're going to start with checklists, most likely, just to begin. Any security program starts off with checklists. All good stories do, right? Uh, because you're going to start with something, and it may just be that compliance checklist. It may be something else that you're trying to get towards in the rest of the organization. But over time, you're going to want to figure out what your gaps are, do this sort of this deficit analysis. What things do I need to know more about? Do I want to know about efficiency? Do I want to know how fast I can run as opposed to whether or not I can just run? And then get into the idea of sustaining that metrics program. So where do you start? For one, there are going to be a lot of silos. And that's going to be the hardest part, is actually breaking those things down. Does anyone else in your organization use metrics? Again, I, I, I'm fairly positive that somebody somewhere does. Um, even if you're a small utility, somebody's reporting something out. And figuring out what that looks like and how you can translate that to be successful, don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. If you only have checklists, those are OK, too. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So with all that being said, uh, beyond the Zelda reference, I'm going to give you a couple of hints that I've been able to see in creating these programs in the past so that you can just kind of hit the ground running, give you some tools. The first are a whole lot of business terms. Yay. Everybody loves business terms. Has anybody heard the term smart before, right? So think about um, sort of the metrics that we're going to talk about and metrics that we've seen in the past and whether or not they are smart. So first, whether or not they're specific. Is there ambiguity behind those metrics or not? The number one famous metric that we always constantly hear are how many attacks per day, blah, dee, dee, blah, blah, right? Are attacks per day specific? I have no idea what attacks mean. Your definition of attack, if you're saying that you're suffering thousands of attacks a day, I guarantee you it's very different from my, what my definition of attack is, which there aren't thousands of per day. Is it measurable? Do you have an indicator for success? So, 5,000 attacks a day, do I actually know what that looks like from a success criteria? What am I trying to get out of that conversation there? Actionable. Can you actually incorporate that into something? Is that going to drive down risk in any way, shape, or form to give you programmatic improvements? If you say that you're suffering from thousands of attacks per day, are you actually driving towards something that you want in your program to be able to help you out? Probably not. It sounds a little bit more fuddy than anything else, right? And then relevant, uh, whether or not it's actually relevant to the risk posture of your organization. Again, now this is thinking a little bit about that board truth, because we have to pull that thread all the way through. They're speaking in terms of risk. They're not speaking in terms of the, ambi and the ambiguous tack scenarios. This is the one thing that it actually is, time, time related. It's per day. So um, the, that 50,000 attacks per day is at least the T out of smart. 
Uh, so you've got at least one-fifth of the equation there. All right. So once we establish what a metric should look like, and I'll show some examples in a bit for that ground truth metric, what do you actually do for a program? So you start off by actually just creating those metrics, just straight up, figure out what it is that that data may save for you, and I'll show you some examples where you actually want to have something programmatic in place. Collect the data. Um, for ICS, this actually may be some manual sources, right? You may be actually asking for engineers to fill out something in, God forbid, Excel, but Excel spreadsheets are, again, how all programs and good stories start. Um, so start something off, have them start reporting on the thing that you is most meaningful to you, and get something going. I shouldn't have to say that, but you actually want to start the data somewhere. Uh, you do want to put security provisions around that, right? Because if you just have a whole bunch of security metrics just lying in a repository that's just out there, uh, make sure you secure that thing, right? Um, and then actually have a way to analyze and compile the data. Most people don't think about this too much, right? You're actually creating a program. It's not measuring something just for the sake of measuring something. You're going to go through and report those metrics, and here's where you have to think about graphs, bar charts, things that may speak to executives or management that you actually want to show trending for, as opposed to just a blank number. And then lastly, but most importantly, is actually using the metric. That's why SMART becomes applicable as an acronym, because you want to make sure it ties back to the program, right? You want to make sure that it's actually something that you'll be able to use, as opposed to just saying, well, I just use this to be able to go to a board and say, don't worry about cybersecurity. It's, it's just there. Um, we're doing things, right? Think about what it is that you want them to be able to give you feedback on, because that one side is that information aggregation side that I showed. The other side is governance. And the governance is going to come down on you based off of these metrics. And again, communicating that this is not a static program, right? This is something that you're going to continually use over time. This is something that the first metrics aren't necessarily going to be the best metrics. How tall are you? I'm hungry, right? They may be something, though, that over time you'll be able to refine and get better at to be more descriptive. Because the more that you understand the thing, the more you'll be able to describe it. And as long as you can communicate that out messaging-wise, you should be OK. I say should because mileage always varies. For team and resources, very easily, and I'll actually provide a resources slide that will go through all the research that this was uh, taken from. Uh, the most prevalent research here that I've seen for your team size is that for every one person you have working on this metrics thing, they'll be able to get three to four metrics out. So if you only have a security team of one, they should be able to report on at least three things. If you have a security team of 10, and that's 30 to 40 things that can be reported on. So again, it kind of scales uh, with that, and as you get more infrastructure in place, you may be able to measure more. And I'll talk about, again, some examples of where you might want to start if you are on the side of being able to do 30 to 40 things, which would be amazing. And so remember this, right? Board truth, management, ground truth. I'm going to go through metrics on each one of these so you have a little bit of a flavor for it. And even though I said that uh, red, yellows, and greens are bad, uh, that heat maps may be dead, um, long live heat maps, you're not going to change the board overnight, right? You're not going to be able to change executives overnight. If they want to see a heat map, you've been promoting them in heat maps, you're going to be stuck with that for a while. You may be able to move them towards something more aggressive, like the dollars and cents impact due to a cybersecurity incident that I talked about in 2017, but you may still be stuck in this conversation of red, yellows, and greens, of the heat map, right? Where you have some sort of response criteria based off of where these values fall. But what you can decide is how those values fall. And you could actually put some sort of measurement to that, right? We can actually start talking about, well, we did this tabletop exercise. And during this tabletop exercise, here's where we had on the different pieces of the heat map where we'd fall. And maybe, I would hope, if you're doing you know, some sort of exercise, maybe on the catastrophic side. In which case, you can start talking about cybersecurity in those types of terms becomes very meaningful to that board. So it's not just red, yellows, and greens. There's something else behind it. On the management truth, right? For does truth equal truth? You may be also with greens and reds, right? So this is C2M2. For those of you who haven't seen a scorecard for there, uh, those are maturity indicator levels that crawl, walk, run approach, and what you're doing for your practices within it. You may also be within the NIST cybersecurity framework, in which case you may be talking about the, still the same idea of how implemented am I in a control? Do I have adequate resources for my program? Knowing that, again, you're talking about one level of the truth equation there, right? It may not be the thing that you present to the board directly, but it may be something that you interpret for them. 
And then lastly, the buckle up buckaroos side of the equation, the ground truth. So the ground truth piece gets a little tricky uh, because for a long time we've been looking at different dashboards, right? Uh, things that we'll see out of our sim, our event management systems, right? They'll be able to show us all these pretty colors of the things that we may want to measure, but it may not be an actual metric, right? Because what you're looking at there is, in this case, the idea that we are able to report out on a thing doesn't mean that it should be a metric per se. It may be very useful and actionable on day-to-day -day operations of how it is that you work through your program, but the actual measurement may take a lot more uh, value and a lot more work than that. So without further ado, uh, let's dial a thing to maximum effort all the way to 11 and figure out what that could look like. So I'm going to reference uh, one of the jobs that I had uh, in years prior, Electric Power Research Institute. We did an effort on security metrics, and this is volume one. Volume two has got some additional, and three has got some additional controls and conversations around uh, automation on that. But I'm going to show you what a worksheet could look like if you're starting from scratch and you don't know where to start after the dollars and cents conversation. You want to talk about ground truth. We already have not only a worksheet for what a metric could look like, but we actually uh, validated with industry, and actually many people in the room that were part of the working group, what metrics they would be able to start within their ICS program. Um, so if you don't know where to start, here's where you could start. So we did a summarization of all the research that happened today. A lot of the resources that I already put in this presentation already in a fact check industry peer-reviewed conversation uh, with the actual utility owners and operators in the room going through this process. We broke down the levels of truth. Right? Um, so we were able to say for each level, what is the truth that you want to be able to talk about? I didn't talk about it in those terms, but you get the idea. And then providing these metrics worksheets. So what's the data that I want to collect? What's the algorithm that I want to be able to use? Who owns that data? Who would be the person to actually collect and report on that data? Uh, examples that you'd be able to use from there. And this is what the worksheet looked like. Uh, it's just weird for me because uh, one of the modes that we have at Axio is to kill every spreadsheet we find. Yet, here you go. You could use this spreadsheet to start off with. Um, very simple, unique ID for what the metric is. What's your organizational goal? Again, keep in mind, this is rolling up the chain. This is going up to that board level truth. So being able to speak in those terms is critically important. And you'll also be able to say at that management level, what's that management truth? What are the objectives that I want to be able to see in the NIST cybersecurity framework or C2M2 or any other framework that you may use? This is, you know, tailor this to yourself. Don't, don't take this as, oh, this guy at SANS told me I should just use a spreadsheet and now we're good to go. If you're using some other framework to describe your management truth, that's where that gets plugged into. We also then have a conversation for what the definition is. And it should be smart, right? It should have that specificness. It should be something that has got a number associated with it that you can talk about in some sort of equation, which will come up next. Well, not next, 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 next. Next will be what type of metric is it? So EPRI actually defined this. Uh, several other bodies of research have gone through what type of metrics you could have out there, whether or not it's impact-based, efficiency-based, right? The percentage of a thing. Uh, how quick am I doing this? Am I able to run that uh, eight-minute mile? And what environment you may be in. Um, we were able to demonstrate across utilities that this can be done both in IT and OT, critically, right? Again, noting that within OT, some of it may be observation from engineers, paper trails, ticketing help desks. It may not be as automated as you would like, but it's still possible, right? Rolling up the sleeves to be able to get it done. And then actually have a distinct calculation and formula for what that looks like. Don't worry, I will show an example of this in a second, so you don't have to like copiously take notes and say, this guy just went up there and started rambling, and then we never saw an example of anything. OK, and then what sort of uh, target are you going for? Again, uh, 50,000 attacks per day, 5,000 attacks per day, 50 attacks per day doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't get me to a target. I can't control that metric. Therefore, it may not be a good metric for you to be able to demonstrate something with your program. Applicable standards, again, this is helping you out with that culture of compliance. If you're already in NERC SIP, I'd expect to see a NERC SIP conversation here. If you're using 62443, I expect to see something from 62443 in there as well. Uh, that's going to be edited out of the video, I'm sure. Um, and then lastly, what type of frequency do you want to be able to measure this at? Right? Again, remembering that one full-time employee typically can do about three to four metrics per. And then who's responsible for that? 
What's their actual job? Who's the person who, who has the data, who's responsible for actually collating the data, analyzing the data, and moving forward? And then what type of data sources are you looking at? Do you have automated feeds that you can pull from safely in your ICS environment? Or do you have to rely on something that's a little bit more manual from observation? And then the last but not least, how would you think about this problem? Are you going to report this out on a graph, bar chart, uh, time series, however it may look like? So here's a good example to start off with, uh, mean time to fix. Right? We talk about this metric. It's actually probably one of the more popular metrics outside of I just want to talk about uh, how many attacks per day, which at this point everyone's tired of me talking about. You have a very unique indicator here, IR2. There may be a series of how many of these that you have in your organization willing to measure. Measure the effectiveness of an organization or business unit to recover from an incident. So in this case, it could be IT has their own set, right? OT has their own. It could be per facility based. You may have different uh, metrics as opposed to rolling these all up, because if you roll up mean time to fix, especially in IT and OT, it may mean nothing to you at that point. Uh, actually looking at the objectives within C2M2 or CSF, number of hours per incident when an incident occurs for recovery by business unit, by facility, however it is that you want, and that would definitely be an effectiveness measure, right? We're talking about how fast I can do a thing. How effective am I? Uh, within that, and say, you may say that you're in different data sets based off your IT or OT environment. You have a very simple equation here, your data recovery subtracted by the date of occurrence over the total number of incidents. Here you could say for a target, as an example, maybe you don't say that we want to drive ourselves down to 8.8 .8 days. Maybe you don't know what that looks like yet because you're just starting off. I guarantee you you'd expect that to trend lower over time, right? As we deal with more incidents, we get better at it, therefore it should be trending lower. You don't have to put a line in the sand, especially if people get nervous about the idea that this could go towards KPIs or some other indicator of their own performance, uh, what that may look like. Your applicable standards, uh, back, second, there we go. The applicable standards you may have, your collection frequency, reporting frequency, who actually owns the data, who collects the data, who is the customer of that information. Your data sources, in this case, again, you may have your trouble ticketing system, your manual sources, but you also may be able to have the benefit of SIMS and other automated tools that you have out there. Before going on to talk about what type of uh, bar chart you'd want to look at. Okay, that was really dry. I get that. It's important to note, though, that this is not hard, right? All of that information up there is something that you can do within your environment no matter where you are. It may require some manual sources. You may want to be able to look at this from a journey, though, right? Going back to maturity models in this case, you can see here, starting off very simply, where you're, we start off with, you've never done this before, getting data is going to be hard, automation is going to be impossible. You're still defining a thing. However, over time, you can get to defining and documenting what that looks like. You can get towards this idea of having a well-established or sustainable program in metrics so you can talk about this thing in a meaningful way across all the different truths. And again, the reason that I started off with my personal journey here was because for me, it started off with just a, a stupid question, the, the stupid question that I had, right? But I know that ICS, in like my gut, I know that ICS security is going to be the people that solve this problem. Because we already have engineers that are already doing some sort of measurement. It's in the DNA. It's very different than other sectors where that's not necessarily the case. So I fully expect us to be able to have this conversation and continue this conversation while also noting that you may start with something really simple. That your truth could just be as simple as, who's approving my security plans? Am I doing better with that over time? That may be where you start, and that's perfectly OK. But measure something, start doing a thing. Do anything in this space. I guarantee you will get better with it over time. So to summarize, three to four FTEs, roughly, per metric that you want to be able to do. right? Um, I'm sorry, reverse that. Three to four uh, metrics per FTE. That's a lot of people think about one problem there. Uh, identify your data sources. Break down those silos. If somebody else is measuring something, if somebody else is using metrics and reporting up, just ride their coattails. You can totally do that. That is allowed. That is fair game. Messaging is going to be very important, right? So in this case here for messaging, you may have to say ahead of time, hey, the thing that we're going to start off with is I don't necessarily know that much right now. We're going to get better at that, though. So when we start talking about weight, I'm going to measure in stones. I don't know what size the stone is yet, but eventually we'll get to pounds, maybe kilograms. right? Measure something, start doing a thing here, and you'll get better with it over time. Adapt those metrics as needed. 
You'll want to be able to gain further understanding over time. That's what's going to happen just by measuring the thing, right? Doing this as part of your culture, doing this as part of what you do without just admiring the problem. Make it actionable. Because if those measures aren't something that you're actually going to use, then don't bother with this yet. Keep on doing the checklist. That may be where you're stuck at right now, and that's totally fine. But if you can do more, do more and be bold with this problem. Because in the field, it's really messy for us right now, right? Our data sources could be everywhere, they could be nowhere. We don't necessarily know who the right silos are to break down. But in the boardroom, they're asking this conversation routinely. And there's gonna be a point in time where we can't keep saying red, yellows, and greens as a way to placate the problem. We're gonna actually have to get to what those different levels of truth are. So start thinking about this problem now. You may not be ready to totally dive in, and I understand that. But start thinking about it now because we're all going to be here eventually and have to have these conversations. So with that, uh, this is my contact information, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you could actually get an access uh, to this presentation on axio.com slash presentations. I'll include some references up there that include all the research uh, topics that we have there. Welcome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you.